Hey, what's going on? This is Joe, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a bunch of speakers from Kanto. So just a quick story to get this started. I've been with my wife about 13 years now, and the first gift I got her was about three days in. She was having a party, and she was playing music through a laptop. And I was like, you can't, you just can't play music through laptop speakers and have a party. So I bought her these Logitech... Uh, computer speakers and it came with this sub over here they still work and that was 13 years ago so if there's any question about my interest in speakers there you have it for all of you guys who are interested in how i get my wife to allow me to do all of these things and the secret is i bought her speakers right away all right so i was contacted by canto and they wanted me to review some of their speakers now, Kanto has a bunch of different speakers. They gave me a catalog and they said, hey, take a look and see what you're interested in reviewing. So what I chose for this review and for different reasons is the Kanto U4s, the Kanto Sub-6, the U6s, and speaker stands for both of them. Now, I call this a too long, didn't watch. Basically, if you want a quick overview of what I thought about these speakers, I would first have to say I really love the way they look. They're not the cheapest speakers in the world, but there are a ton of features that they have that other speakers don't have. What you're paying for is the build quality, the aesthetics, the feature set, and the sound quality. They get really loud. I do wish that they would be able to play a little bit lower without adding a sub to them, but they get pretty low. Overall, they're the kind of speakers that you just want to admire. The more you look at them, the more you want to use them. When you see them there in your room, it kind of reminds you like, hey, you should be listening to something or watching a movie. You can't have something that looks that good go unused. So these check all the boxes and then some. So I asked Kanto to send me the U4s and a sub. And the U4s are going to be on a desk and they're going to actually be replacing those Logitechs. We went with a gloss teal because that's the color my wife likes. And she flipped out when I showed her that that was actually available. She's never seen that before. And that was actually one of the first times I've ever seen my wife excited about a pair of speakers. The only other time was when she was impressed by the Fluence AI40s. So the U4s are 329. They come in a bunch of different colors. So we got the teal gloss finish. They also have bamboo, gloss black, gloss white, gloss red, matte black, matte gray, and matte white. These share almost the same features as the bigger U6, but this has a four inch driver, Kevlar driver like bulletproof vest Kevlar driver, and the same one inch silk dome tweeter. They're rated at 70 watts RMS. On their website, it says the frequency response is from 60 hertz to 20,000 hertz. For inputs, it has RCA. You have your 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack. You have two optical inputs. You have Bluetooth apt X. And for the RCA input, you have an option of using either a line level input or using the phono stage if you plan on using this with a turntable that doesn't have a built-in preamp. It also has a subwoofer output and a USB port to charge a device like the Chromecast Audio. So the cool thing about having all of those inputs is that we were able to actually take off one of the sound bars that we had connected to one of the TVs that's close to the speakers. Instead of having that separate sound bar, we just connected the optical cable from the TV to these speakers and we're able to switch from the TV to Angela's computer. And for the Bluetooth connection, we actually have a Google Home set up to play music through there. So we can easily switch between those three options just using the remote. These speakers also have an auto standby function. So they save power when they're not being used and they automatically turn on when they sense a signal coming through one of the sources. Out of all the speakers I've reviewed, this is my favorite remote. It's just a simple layout. Everything makes sense. It's very intuitive. If you notice the Bluetooth has a disconnect button, it comes in handy when you have multiple devices connected via Bluetooth and you want to disconnect one so you can use another one. You just press that button and it automatically disconnects. Everything is placed where you'd expect it. The buttons are nice and big, especially the volume ones, which are the ones that you're going to be using most. It also has a nice heft to it, nice weight, and it just feels like quality. Thank you, Kanto. I also requested the S4 stands because I knew that they would be going on a desk. I wanted to elevate them and point the speakers upwards. And that's exactly what these stands do. They sent us the copper ones, which look real nice with the teal gloss finish on the U4s. They have a bunch of different colors and the price ranges depending on which material you get. So they have black, white, aluminum, brass, stainless steel, and this copper one. What these stands do is they have a 16 degree tilt. And so that allows the speakers to be aimed up towards your ears when you're sitting at your desk. It also makes it so that there's no reverberance that is transferred to your desk. It absorbs all that, that's helpful. Usually I used to use foam pads, but 
These look a lot better than that. The thing I really like about these is that they're made to work with these speakers. They have a hole for the screw and you can actually screw the speaker onto these stands so they don't move. You can't accidentally knock them over, nothing like that. I also requested the sub six, the six inch sub. They also have a sub eight, which is an eight inch sub. And the reason I wanted the sub is because if they were gonna replace these Logitechs, these Logitechs came with a five and a quarter inch subwoofer that actually put out some decent bass. So I didn't want my wife to check out these new speakers and say like, hey, how come these have less bass than my other ones? You know, I wanted her to be impressed. So the Sub 6 sells for 249 on their website. It's rated at 200 watts. It has a low pass filter, a phase switch. As with the speakers, it also has an auto power off function. So we set them up at Angela's desk and she really liked them. She just loves the way they look on there. So yeah, these speakers aren't the cheapest. They're not the most expensive, but to see my wife smile, it's worth it. I don't think she was as happy with these Logitechs, to be honest, but I got you now. Okay, so I also got the U6 in gloss black. And the reason I got those was to try them out in this area over here where I have my turntable. So the U6 sells for $3.99 on their website. They have almost all of the same colors as the U4s, except for the teal gloss. These have a higher power rating instead of 70 watts RMS. These are 100 watts RMS and 200 watts peak. So instead of the four inch Kevlar woofers in the U4s, this is using a five and a quarter Kevlar woofer. Pretty much everything else with regards to the feature set is the same as the U4s. Like I was saying, I wanted to connect these to my turntable. My turntables do have a built-in preamp, but people in the forums are saying that it's not really the best one. So I wanted to see how much better it would sound with the preamp that is built into these speakers. And when I hooked it up, I did notice that it sounded a little bit warmer. Yeah, it just had a nicer sound to it. It's hard to explain. What I did notice is when I did use the preamp on the U6s, it didn't seem as loud as when I used the built-in preamp on the turntables and just used the line input. I also noticed that the same thing happened with the optical input on the U4s. When we use Bluetooth, or the RCA analog input, or the 3.5 millimeter jack going to the computer, I just noticed that the max volume was significantly louder. I asked the guys at Kanto about that and they said they'd get back to me. I also received some stands for these. I didn't want the speakers to be on the same surface as the turntable because when the bass hits, it could cause the needle to jump and we don't want that. So these stands are 129 bucks. They also have a 26 inch version. They're very hefty. So they're 16.3 pounds each. That's useful because the speaker is sitting on top and it doesn't feel top heavy as opposed to some of the other stands that I have where it feels like if you hit the top, it could knock the whole thing over. When I go to move this thing, it feels like one solid unit, like just one big heavy speaker. That's good if you have kids or pets. It comes with options for spikes if you're using them on carpet or rubber feet if you're using it on wood. So they really put a lot of thought into these stands. That's the other part of Kanto's business. They make speakers and they also make mounts. You can tell that they know what they're doing. These stands have the ability to swivel and lock into place so you can keep the stand facing forward, but the top where the speaker is, is swiveled and tilted the way that you want it. The cable management's really good. You're able to put in not only the speaker wire, but the power cable can also fit through the slot in the back. Like the smaller stands for the U4, these also have a screw so that the speaker is attached firmly to the base. It all moves as one unit. So how do they all sound? That's the most important question, right? I took mic measurements of each speaker, including the sub. Here's the measurement for the U6. It's relatively flat and it goes down to about 60 hertz at minus 3 dB. They claimed 40 hertz, which is at minus 10 dB. So these would probably match well with something like the sub 8 that they have. Now let's move on to the U4s. The U4s also measure flat, which is good. I always find that it's better to have speakers that measure flat and then they offer the bass and treble controls so you can adjust it to your preference. But it's always good to start with a flat frequency response. So the U4s have a steep roll off below 100 hertz. From my measurements, these go down to 92 hertz as opposed to the claimed 60 hertz. Just for fun, I had some Mica MB42Xs, which are passive speakers. They sell for 89 bucks, but they're highly regarded in the budget audiophile community. Looking at these side by side, you'll see that the bass response is about the same, but the highs from the three quarter inch tweeter is just not as good as the one inch tweeter on the U4s. Also, the finish on these is not even close. 
they're passive they have no amp they have none of the features that these have so they're great at 89 bucks but they're not to be compared with these speakers it was just for fun okay so i also wanted to take a look at the sub output i'm not talking about the sub itself i'm talking about the output coming from the back of the speakers so what i did was i connected some rcas to the back of the sub out and i connected to the previously reviewed amp the dta 2.1 bt and i connected that amp to the passive u6 speaker you had the power speaker sub out to an amp connected to the passive speaker. What I noticed is the sub output seems to have a crossover around 150 hertz. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a high pass crossover like the Vanitus that I reviewed previously. And so it doesn't take out the bass frequencies from these speakers when a sub is connected. So just for fun, I replaced the U6s with the previously reviewed Fluence AI40s just to see what the bass response was like. And as you can tell, the Fluence hit a little bit lower, somewhere around 47 hertz, 50 hertz, somewhere around there at minus three decibels. Pretty impressive for a sealed speaker, once again. Now let's move on to the sub six. If you take a look at the bass response from the sub six, a six inch driver, you can see that the bass response is similar actually to the, once again, the AI40s, which are using a five and a quarter inch driver. Okay, but it's not about the Fluence. They've had their review. The thing is the low pass crossover wasn't very steep. So adjusting that point just seemed to kind of allow more of the high bass notes rather than cutting it off completely. The smoothest crossover settings that I found with the U4s was around 30% volume on the sub, the crossover at 70 hertz, the phase set to 180 degrees. So this is with my measurements test. You might want to experiment and see if it sounds a little bit different in your room, but that might be a good starting point. A few things I didn't like about these speakers. The first thing is I wish it would have gotten louder with the phono input as well as the optical input. I wish that they also had a better low frequency response without the use of a sub, kind of like the AI40s that I keep referring to. Also, I wish on their website they would have used the frequency response at minus three decibels instead of minus 10. It's a little bit more accurate when you do it at minus three decibels. I also wish that it had a high pass crossover when you connect the sub because it would allow the speakers to play louder because they're not having to play those bass notes. I wish they had a steeper crossover point on the sub six, just so you could tune it a little bit better. So these are ported speakers, and I wish that the bass was a little bit tighter. They can seem a little bit sloppy at times. So usually you get what you pay for. So what are you getting? You're getting a relatively flat frequency response, even though the speakers are still fun. They're not like studio monitors where they're very clinical. They're, they're fun to listen to. You're paying for quality construction and the finish. You're gonna have to spend way more on a speaker to get something even close to these. These are just beautifully done. I've made my own speakers in the past and I know what it's like to try to paint a pair of speakers and make it look shiny and perfect. And there's no way, no matter how much time I'd spend, that I would be able to get it to look as good as these do. Also, I like the fact that the amplifier is quiet on these. On the Fluence, I complained that there was some hiss. These do not have that issue. The feature set, I mean, these have a ton of different features from the sub output to the multiple optical inputs to the phono input for a turntable, the remote, everything. I like that they've put a lot of thought into these. Even when it comes to the stands, they all work together. It just feels like it's a complete set. I like the color options. The wife likes them. I'm sure if you have your house set up with red accents, you might like the red speaker. And with other speakers, you may not have that option. So good job, Kanto, for taking the chance and trying out different colors. All of them look great, by the way. That matte gray, I almost got those. Those look pretty cool too. The other thing is that they get loud. So if you wanna play these loud, they can do it. They can handle it. And last, like I said, they just look awesome. They look like quality. And when they're sitting there, it just makes you wanna use them. It's just a weird thing. It's like having a nice looking camera. A camera doesn't have to look nice. Ergonomic, but it doesn't have to look nice. But if you have a nice looking camera, Leica, it makes you just wanna pick it up and use it. And that's what these speakers do for me. When I see them, it makes me just wanna turn them on and play something out of them. Just like Leica charges a premium for their aesthetic and the fact that it makes you just wanna use it, Kanto's doing the same thing. They charge more because they put more effort into these speakers than others and it shows. So that's pretty much it for the Kanto speakers. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to all of these products. Thank you again to Kanto for sending these out for me to review. Oh yeah, one more thing. I just set up a new Patreon account and people have been asking me to do sound tests where I compare these speakers and I never thought it was something that's very useful but I guess it kind of makes sense. My thought was that it's gonna depend on the mics that you use and the headphone or speakers that you're listening from. But I guess it does kind of make sense if you're trying to use the speaker test to determine how speakers compare to one another. Don't think that the speakers are gonna sound exactly how they sound there, 
but it'll give you an idea how they compare to other speakers. Those tests are gonna be available on my Patreon. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description as well. The sound test consists of music, male vocals, and female vocals, and I'm testing them on all of these speakers. Also, I've started a new podcast. Episode 001 is on my Patreon, so make sure to check that out. I have different tiers where it's like a dollar subscription, $5 subscription and $10. And for right now, I'm going to allow anybody who subscribes with a dollar subscription to access the podcast, my very first podcast. So don't miss it. From then on, I think it's going to be somewhere from the $5 to $10 tier. And up. also what I'm going to be doing on my podcast is I'm going to be talking about the stuff that I've reviewed previously. So you're going to hear follow up. So I might have found some things about the previous products that I didn't know about that I just found out about things like that. So you'll receive all of those updates. Also, if you ask me a question on Patreon, that is my top priority. So you guys are my VIP. I'm going to make sure to answer your questions first. Also, you're going to get early access to some of my reviews. For certain videos, you're going to see them before I post them here on YouTube. And last, you're going to see some behind the scenes footage, just some extras for you guys. So if you feel like supporting, make sure to do that. I'm going to have a lot of stuff that I can offer on Patreon just because if you're subscribing, that helps me provide more content to you. So anyway, that's it. I hope you liked the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell. You know what to do. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.